In this episode of Because That's What Heroes Do, we take up WandaVision episode four. We interrupt this program. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox back again with uh, Megan Doherty and our continued exploration of WandaVision. So, Megan, we're up to episode four. We interrupt this program. And this show, this episode rather, opened with perhaps one of the most visually stunning effects in the entire WandaVision series. You want to describe it, and then I'll jump in. Absolutely, and I'd say along with visually stunning, it was one of the most emotionally impactful of the season so far because it was an unblip scene. In the last episode, we got to know character in WandaVision, Geraldine, found that she did have an existence on the outside of whatever world Westview was. And in season, in episode four, we start to understand what that is. She was at the hospital. She's the Monica Rambo member of sword had been at the hospital with her mother and like everyone else on the world from when this clip was formed reconstituted from the dust that they had all been reduced to at the end of infinity war and it was within a hospital all sorts of patients and attendees and guests and doctors and nurses were reappearing it was this chaotic scene i thought it was tremendously done in a wonderful way to capture what that might have been like in in these very because it was happening all over the world and it would have been pretty terrifying experience. Tom, what were your thoughts on it? I found it visually stunning, Megan. And it, there is a scene, I think we talked about in the last episode, mm -hmm. but there is a scene in one of the Spider-Man movies where this happens. But in the Spider-Man movie, the emphasis is on the effect of the people who were not blipped seeing their friends reappear. This was an emphasis on being either unblipped or reblipped or something and it was simply a reversal of the process we saw in age of ultron where when people do get blipped and, and i just was stunned by it how gorgeous and beautiful it was and how impactful it was and what would you say three seconds five seconds maybe it was just infinitesimal and you hinted at this but she wakes up into the absolute chaos of a hospital and in this told, you've been gone five years and not a whole lot of time to process that. Having to jump right into it. And also at the exact same time, getting the news that your mother, whose bedside you were at, had in the five years you were inexplicably gone for, had passed away. Yeah, I, I just the fact that she got back to work so quickly, I find staggering. That's a great point because I thought that as well. And she, of course, being a very over the top, there's a reason she was called Lieutenant Trouble as a child. Wants to get back out in the field, fighting the bad guy, doing the Lord's work. And even her boss says, maybe we should just take it slow. And we're going to give you an easy assignment to ease back into this. I have an extra theory about that, though. Sure you do. <laughs> but what's that now? Hayward, I think it's possibly nefarious. And I think he never would have been promoted to the role that he was had half of his competition not been blipped. And I think he was not happy that people started reappearing and wanting to come back and start taking over what had become his little fiefdom. I agree with I, got. I agree with half that. And but I have to say, being an American, the New York Fire Department lost three hundred and forty three people on nine eleven. And mm -hmm. literally the next day, guys and gals were promoted out of the ranks to lieutenants and captains. And so when you have that kind of disaster, you just have to take the next group you can and move forward. So that part, okay. although I certainly agree with your analysis, that part really didn't, I didn't find that as nefarious. I thought he was threatened by her not to take over, but because she was so much more competent than he was. Uh, <laughs> Tomato. <laughs> exactly. And plus she just had the legacy of her mother running the organization, and that's always yeah. an important legacy. And he clearly has a different agenda than hers. But for a while, at least in those early scenes when they were in the offices, I thought that was not an unreasonable approach to let's not put you back in space right away. Let's keep you here on Earth, maybe a assignment or two to get going. And of course, the assignment is Wanda. Yeah. Some great characters in episode four. Yeah, I was it was so happy to see them. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Woo and Darcy Lewis. Which one do you want to start with? Oh, let's start with Darcy Lewis. Okay. She's just one of my favorites. She was, and Darcy, of course, became the assistant of um, 
I forgot the Jane's last name, Jane Foster in the first Thor. And she was the, I guess she's the smart aleck neighbor, but she's the know-it-all friend who's always there, whether you want her or not. But she became mm-hmm. a part of the team. Now in episode, uh, the second Thor movie, she became almost parody for the way the hunk intern, and she was just going to hunk out and have a chunk of hunk herself and made out with him. <laughs> and that's a funny trope. And you no, know, I laughed at that too. But in this episode and in this series, she just blossomed. So you want to pick it up there? I think it's great because we met her originally in that first Thor and she was, I think, probably a doctoral candidate. She was a student, functionally, even if an adult one. And always funny, always sarcastic, unflappable. And yeah, I like seeing her. She was funny in Thor too. Her pet name for Mjolnir of Mew Mew, I think is a classic from its first utterance. But then, you know, now she comes back and she is a full doctor and she's ridiculously smart and she's got amazing pattern recognition and she's completely unfazed by huge military operations or anyone who thinks they've got authority. She's just, you need me because I'm the scientist, so maybe get me a coffee. No? Okay, not going to happen. I I thought her attitude was great. She was just a a wonderful kind of younger generation character on the show. I I, I can't say enough good things about her. I'm glad you brought up the get me a coffee. That was, that could have been in (laughs) stand-up. That could have been in a comedy routine literally from the 1880s. It would have been just as powerful then as it was when I watched it again a couple of weeks ago. It was, oh, or not. And the the comic timing was perfect. The whole setup was perfect. And I just love a snap little gag like that that they can run off that's Mm -hmm. been around forever. So, Jimmy Wu. What did you think of Agent Wu? Delighted to see him again. But the first thing I noticed is the cookie. He practiced the card trick. And he learned it, and he got good at it from Ant-Man, I think it was. But yeah, he put in the time. He learned how to do the press the digitation, and I thought that was lovely. My notes reveal yeah. card trick from Ant-Man and the Wasp. So we both, <laughs> yeah, it was so cool that he did that. And it's not that he could do it. It's now his signature calling card. It's now his thing. <laughs> it's now his thing. Yeah, I, I think he was, he's always been, I think, one of the funniest characters of all. He's just, again, I think he's your name. As comedy, his time is fantastic. His delivery is flawless and i thought he and darcy kind of playing off together as like super competent individuals who are consistently underrated by everyone around them (laughs) i really like the pairing the symmetry of that and how they start working together i thought it was just marvelously played so i think it was this episode that we saw a very disturbing picture of vision and the picture was after his death in age of ultron and the vision seems to be becoming more self-aware. And I'm not sure how far down the metaphysics we can go here, but we have a character who's a caricature of a real AI character in a movie gaining self-awareness and self-recognition. And it really struck me. That's something that was really interesting to explore how, why, and when he became self-aware. Did anything in that strike you either? The first thing that I thought when seeing it for the first time was that it was vision that Wanda created of kind of the last time that she had seen vision in the physical world. And it kind of does raise the question, was it just a vision or is she animating an actual body in this reality? Because everyone else is from a real person in the physical world is vision two. And because of, I guess his remains and what they're composed of, is it possible to regain sentience based on Wanda's, I guess, activating life force type power? I think they explore this a little more in future episodes, but for now, I think we've just got the question of, is this a version of reality or a complete fabrication? And that's up in the air. Well, I find the questions you raised absolutely appropriate. I had those same, although I couldn't articulate them as well as you did. Or I learned a new phrase in a con call I was on called IRL in real life. IRL vision or construct vision. Because early on, I thought of vision almost as an anime character created by Wanda mm-hmm. for her world. But he does seem to be coming more sentient. And... I had really never thought about self-awareness as as evidence of sentiency, but that, because most of my thinking of that was informed by data, 
and his creations mm. in the next generation. But it's really interesting, and we will explore this same topic and question in later episodes as well. But I really got a sense that Wanda couldn't fully control vision because of this question's vision was ans- asking himself, and where would that take the series and kind of Wanda's own journey? I think it's, this was a, an episode, I think, where they were very much setting up the second half of of the series. Because it definitely, the episode created a lot more questions than it answered. Although it did answer at least the awareness on the outside of Westview. Now we, could, we now understand why things are presented the way we are. We're starting to understand that this is a contrast that is being broadcast, that is being sent out in this particular format. And I think the question is right now, at least within the scope of, or within the watching of it, from the outside, is what they're seeing what's actually happening? And how much is it reality? And how much is it just broadcast or imagination or presentation? Which I think they touch on a little when they look at the outfit that Geraldine Monica had been wearing that came out with her. What had been altered stayed altered, which I think is an important point. I'm going to end with, once again, the music. Because Mm -hmm. they played one of my very top favorite Jimi Hendrix songs, which is Voodoo Child. And Voodoo Child came out when I was a teenager, and it had a very different meaning for me then. Then it seemed to imply to me drugs and psychedelia and scene, if I could use that word, if it still exists. But here, it struck me it was absolutely perfect because the entire family construct she has made is this voodoo, and are these voodoo children? And was this created out of her mind? I love the song anyway. And when it came on, I just thought, wow, that's absolutely perfect for this end scene as much as Daydream Believer was perfect for the end of episode three. What were your final thoughts or ending thoughts? And mine was right about that final scene as well, but it wasn't the music. It was what seemed like almost a breaking of the fourth wall. Uh, Now that we know there's a fourth wall and Vision as he's holding the baby and sitting down almost seems to be looking straight at us, the viewer. And I thought that was a really interesting clue about where his mental state was and how we're meant to be perceiving him and the reality that they're in entirely. I thought, yeah, I thought it's just a little bit of a clue that trouble is ahead. It certainly is. And I hope our listeners will join us our next time where we look at WandaVision episode five. Till then, Megan. It's been great, Tom. Thank you so much. Can't wait to do it again. This is Tom Fox. I hope you'll join us in our next episode where we take up episode five of WandaVision on a very special episode. Thanks so much for listening. Please leave us a review and we look forward to visiting with you again.